What's up, guys? It's your boy Grow Mouse here. I'm glad you guys like the season one finale. You guys have been giving me a lot of great comments. The far red LED 730 nanometer spectrum for flower initiation has been a topic that's been on my mind for quite a while. Here's the far red thread on Roll It Up, started by Raz. And there's some great discussion. I suggest you guys read it. But when you shop for a flower initiator, you see some of these things for 169 bucks for a 10 watt LED. You can get them a little cheaper on eBay. But I'm thinking, man, we could probably do this deal for 20 bucks or less. I mean, these diodes, there's nothing special to them. It's just a certain spectrum and they're not really for photosynthesis it's just for initiation of flowering so the thing that really triggered it for me was episode 159 of the dude grow show they had digger on he's an led grower and even though i had read a lot about 730 nanometer led sometimes when you hear someone's voice you hear their experience it really inspires you so digger you really inspired me i want to do a little build for you guys 20 dollars build standard tools you're gonna need wire stripper small screwdriver if you want to tap this little heat sink you can tap it a little rubbing alcohol the materials we're just going to be using three three watt semi LED 730s. They're about a dollar seventy five each from Steve's LEDs, and you're going to be using the Meanwell LDD 700 milliamp. Now, if you don't want to drill and tap, you can use thermal epoxy. The two part is just going to permanently stick these LEDs to the little heat sink. Or if you're like me, I want to have them removable, so I'm going to go ahead and tap it. Um, this is a speed build, so it's moving really fast. If you guys end up wanting to build this thing, you're probably going to have to pause the video. We start out with a DC female pigtail lead. That's going to attach directly to this tiny DC to DC bucking driver. It's a $6 driver, so if you order a couple of them. That way, if you screw it up, you'll have it. Um, you want to tin all your wires with, I use liquid flux. Um, I tin all the different connections. Um, I, I like this little bucking driver because it's going to fit in this little aluminum heat sink. The aluminum heat sink is a little piece of scrap metal that I had um, left over from another project. It's inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter. And I was able to find some little caps in the fencing department at Lowe's that's going to cap it off and make it look really nice. You see here I'm using a lighter to heat shrink these connections. So this is just the DC power in. We're going to be using a standard cell phone charger to power this little mini miniature driver. Here I'm attaching two DC out leads. This is going to go to the LEDs themselves. Very simple wiring. We're, we're using series wiring here, three LEDs, positive to negative, positive to negative. If that's confusing to you, um, you may want to do a little bit more research because series wiring is, is incredibly simple once you get it uh, straight in your head. So you see here, I want this thing to be kind of neat and clean and enclosed, even though I'm spending less than $20 on this thing. Um, so at this point, I've got the DC in from the cell phone charger. I've got two DC wires out. It's that simple. Positive, negative in, positive, negative out. You want to clean and prepare all the surfaces with rubbing alcohol. Even though this light's only going to be on for five minutes a day at the end of your flowering period, um, there's no reason not to have a good thermal interface. So here you see I'm using just thermal grease. Um, spreading it out nice and thin and smooshing the LEDs around to get a good contact. You get a little bit of a kind of a vacuum contact there. Now, if you don't want to screw, tap, deal with all that, that stuff, go to um, Radio Shack or a computer store. For about seven bucks, you get thermal epoxy. It's a it's a permanent glue. You just stick them, stick them down, and at this point in the video, you'd be done. You just start wiring. For me... Like I said, I like to have them removable in case I decide to use these LEDs for a different project. I can just remove them and clean the thermal grease off. You see here I'm screwing everything down. I'm about to make my first wiring connections. The positive wire from the driver goes into the positive side of the first LED. The negative side of the driver goes into the negative of the last LED. Then you just use tiny little wires in between the three LEDs to connect them. You see on the left-hand side I've got the positive them stripping now. I would connect that to the positive side of that LED, then the negative of that LED would connect there and go to the positive of the next LED, so on and so forth. You can see here basic fundamentals of soldering is tinning all the little pads. There's little copper pads on each of the LEDs. So you just want to put a little bit of liquid flux on the pad, a tiny drop, and then just touch your soldering iron to each LED. That way you don't overheat the LED and you get a little solder on it, it makes connecting a lot easier. Now, if you have big fat fingers like I do, you're probably gonna to wanna to use tweezers for some of these connections. It makes it a little easier and you can avoid burning your hand. 
So here it is finished, really simple, three LEDs in series, positive to negative, positive to negative, and so on. Um, installing the little cap at the end you see at the bottom of your screen. Like I said, it's just a little fence cap for a uh, iron fence from Lowe's in the fencing department, but helps seal it all in and, and keep it nice and clean looking. So we're just about ready to fire it up. I did a little test with a nine volt cell phone charger, a 12 volt cell phone charger, and a 24 volt cell phone charger. And there's no difference. It doesn't matter. The output's the same. I run it on a kilowatt and it's the same um, dissipation at the wall. So the DC bucking drivers can adjust for that. So here you go in the dark, you can see it's not necessarily like super bright because it's not really meant to photosynthesize plants. It's just sending them a signal. But as you can see, it works first try. And we're going to plug it in on the kilowatt uh, just to confirm how much wattage it's using. The maximum wattage would be nine watts since it's three, three watt LEDs, but we're not quite running it at the max current. We're running like 700 milliamps. So it ends up being a uh, spoiler alert. It ends up being six watts. So for uh, 12 bucks in parts and another few dollars worth of things laying around, definitely under 20 bucks, you're getting a six watt flower initiator and you're not having to spend 169 bucks you could actually with this driver and this setup on a little longer piece of heat sink you could do like 10 or 12 of these leds spread all around to cover your full space so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed it just want to get this fast down and dirty video out there and good luck in your projects and your flower initiators and uh thanks again to digger the dude grows podcast for inspiring me to get this project off the ground and i hope you guys decide to tackle something like this thanks for watching see you season two